Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast, episode 12. <laughs> Filming in the lovely basement kitchen today. Normally, I film these things in our nice kitchen upstairs. Today, my wife came through and said, I don't want all that camera junk in the kitchen today. I said, well, I need to film a video. So we went back and forth, decided to vote on it, and I lost one to one. Anyway, down here in the Golden Oak Palace. Now, if you're a fan of mid-1990s Golden Oak, as apparently the original owners of this house were, this is really the place you want to be. Got a lot going on in the Pancast today. As always, we've got carbon steel seasoning tips and advice. We're going to talk about some grill pans, a quick update on a wok, a quick follow-up on that whisk pole from the last episode, some chorizo sausage, and more. Let's get started. Okay, Saturday night, I was getting dressed, getting ready to go out clubbing, sitting on the couch doing nothing but drinking a beer, when I made a classic Saturday night mistake. I picked up my phone and checked email. Saw this headline in all caps. Oh no! So I clicked it, opened the email, and I saw these pictures and, oh no! What is going on here? A fellow named Barry wrote in. He says, Hi Scott, what have I done, as they say. Further down the email it says, this sucks, and do you have any idea what I might have done? This is going from what I see in the pictures, but what I think happened is Barry tried to do some seasoning and use way, 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 way too much oil. Now when we're doing stovetop seasoning, let's quickly run through the steps. Get our pan clean and dry, put about a millimeter of oil in that pan, bring that up to smoking on the stovetop, after that oil has been smoking for a little bit, you need to pour that hot oil out. Wipe the pan until it looks dry, then let it smoke a little more. And here's where I think Barry went awry. I don't think he poured that oil out. I think he just tried to go ahead and season that entire millimeter of oil, and it kind of turned into tar or something in there. I don't know what's going on here. Now let's not ascribe any motives here, but what Barry has done here, and it's something I and probably most other guys do from time to time, is we tend to kind of go overboard. We go a little too far. If we're cooking something and it says to cook something at medium low, well, the dial goes up to high. It'll get done sooner if I turn it up to high. If we're driving and the speed limit is 65, well, it'll get there a lot quicker if I go 90, right? That works unless you get pulled over for reckless driving in Front Royal County, Virginia, and have to return two or three weeks later to go to traffic court, hypothetically. And likewise, seasoning a carbon steel skillet, you've got to be patient. It may seem like, well, if a little oil works, a lot will work better. It doesn't work that way. You've got to go in small, thin layers, be patient, and let that seasoning build up over time. <laughs> Eric Moss left some comments under the Schiacciata video. Schiacciata is a Tuscan flatbread. I learned about it when I was over in Florence, Italy. Eric is apparently in Florence now, he says. I first encountered this here in Florence, and OMG, it really is the best thing ever. There are a lot of good bakeries here, but his favorite is from Forno Ghibellina. Now, I know the pandemic has the tourist industry kind of shut down over there in Florence. Big friends of everybody in Florence. Always happy to give a shout out. If you're in Florence and want some good schiacciata, check out the Forno Ghibellina. Whisk poll results. Last episode, we talked about using metal whisks in carbon steel skillets. I put up a poll. The results are in. Over 500 people voted. I thought that was pretty neat. Over 500. Turns out that 68% of you guys say it's okay to use a metal whisk in your carbon steel. And I kind of agree with that too. I'm going to concur. Uh, if you used a metal whisk in a nonstick skillet, you'd probably ruin it the first time you tried it. Carbon steel is tough enough to handle it. And for that matter, I think cast iron is as well. Now, along those lines, Andrea wrote in and asked, well, why would you want to use a whisk in a pan anyway? Easy. Two words. Sausage gravy. <laughs> Sausage gravy. Get that fond off the pan and turn it into gravy. Okay, now originally today was not supposed to be a pan cast day. Today was going to be the premiere of a big in-depth review and cooking feature based on this Lodge 14-inch cast iron wok. However, once I started that feature, that kind of went off the rails, and it turns out this Lodge cast iron wok may not be all it's cracked up to be. 
<laughs> so in the meantime, while I'm waiting on the replacement to arrive, why not bust out a pan cast? Look for that big wok review cooking feature next week. Okay, Jim writes in and says he wonders if I've considered adding the Debouillet grill pan to my arsenal. Well, without commenting on that pan in particular, let's take a step back here and talk about grill pans for a second. I don't have that Debouillet pan, but I do have a cast iron grill pan. Got these ridges in here. It does an absolutely fantastic job of putting those grill marks on a piece of meat. Like searing a steak, you can get the crosshatch going on there. Really flavorful, does a great job of cooking. But I found that the cleanup on these pans is so onerous that I just stopped using them. And when you cook a steak in a cast iron or a carbon steel, normally it's going to leave some sticky bits in that pan. You can deglaze those and turn those into a pan sauce. In these grill pans, all those sticky bits kind of get stuck down between these ridges. Really tough to get those things out of there. And really what I found is that the time it takes me to cook and eat the steak is less than the time it takes for me to clean the pan. Sometimes it'll take me 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just to clean the grill pan. So I've stopped using them. Now Jim wrote in asking specifically about that Debouillet grill pan. I don't have that one, but if you're interested in the Debouillets for a steak, for example, I just like the old Mineral B Pros. Very thick and heavy, almost as thick as cast iron. Plenty of metal there to retain a lot of heat and maintain a sear. Plus the cleanup is easier. Plus you can do eggs and a lot of other things with the pan. So if you're interested in Debouillet, me, I would go with the Mineral B Pro versus the grill pan. You know what people love to talk about? Chorizo sausage. Chorizo. Justin Imlay writes in and says, it's a sad, sad, sad day today. He learned the hard way not to cook chorizo in his carbon steel. He says it was almost black. Everything cooked fantastic. It slid around like glass. One round of chorizo and it's silver again on the cook area. He wonders if maybe the garlic in the chorizo sausage is what got his seasoning. You know, I don't know a whole lot about chorizo, so what I did is get online and I looked up a bunch of chorizo recipes. And you know what? Every single one of those recipes I looked up calls for using vinegar. Now we use vinegar, I've shown it in other videos, we use vinegar to strip seasoning off of carbon steel pans if you want to reset them. And what I bet happened is, you know, when you cook sausage, it's going to leak juices, grease is going to come out. I bet some of those juices that came out of the sausage had some acidic vinegar in there, and that's what got his pan. Peter Parker wrote in, apparently taking time off from Spider-Man duties. He says, any information as to why the center of the cooking surface always seems to show the least amount of darkness and seasoning on his carbon steel? That's just because that's where the food sits, especially if you use a gas stove, you have oil on the sides of the pan. That oil just kind of sits there and cooks on there the entire time you're cooking. Nothing's really touching it. Nothing's moving on that surface. On the cooking surface where the food sits, you've got utensils. You've got the food kind of sticks a little bit if it's a protein. Going back and forth, moving things around. It's just going to naturally be a little less darker than the sides of the pan. Someone with an unpronounceable name wrote in and said, I tend to use nonstick exclusively for fish and scallops. Have you ever tried browning fish in carbon steel? Yes, I have. When I reviewed that smaller mat for carbon steel pan, I showed browning some salmon in that carbon steel on the stovetop. Get a nice crust on there, flip it over, stick that thing in the oven, take that pan directly to the oven, finish the salmon just like you like it. And carbon steel, I think, works pretty well for fish. Okay, a little big box battle. I'm talking about rotisserie chickens. Normally in the big box battle, we pick Costco versus Sam's. In this episode, I'm going to throw two more combatants into the ring. One is the local grocery store, and the other is the home cook, someone kind of like me or maybe you, when it comes to rotisserie chickens. Now, Costco and Sam's use these things as loss leaders. That's what a lot of people think. They are willing to lose money to sell you a chicken. Uh, Costco's are $4.99, Sam's are $4.98. Essentially the exact same thing there. They both get a thumbs up for the chickens. They're cheap. They're convenient, they taste pretty good. And compared to the local grocery store, my local grocery store charges $9 for a chicken. $9 for the same thing Costco will sell me for five, essentially. The home cook, now I've got a rotisserie in my big fancy oven up there. I have never used it. Why? Again, because going to the grocery store, getting a raw chicken, preparing that, cooking it in my own oven, the cleanup, having to sanitize my countertops, it is just not worth it. Now the key here 
is to get in, get your chicken, and get out. Keep the blinders on. If you go in and get a $5 chicken and happen to pick up a $3,000 flat screen 72 inch TV while you're there, then the model kind of breaks down. But as long as you can stay focused, get your chicken and get out, Costco and Stam's absolutely curb stomp the local grocery store and the home cook when it comes to rotisserie chicken. Okay, that big in-depth review and cooking feature on the Lodge 14-inch cast iron wok should go live sometime next week. Double check that you're subscribed to the channel and your notifications are turned on if you wanna be notified when that thing goes live. Look somewhere on this screen for links to other pancasts and other fun things to watch. Check out the shopping links below and buy something really expensive. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast.